Each device on the network gets a unique IP address. When one device wants to contact another on the local network, we contact them by that IP address. Now this is very much like placing a local phone call, where we just pick up the phone and dial the number. Instead of dialing a phone number, we're dialing an IP address. And just like a phone call, we know who placed the call and who received the call. You'll see I placed an arrowhead indicating the laptop contacted this unit here. However, you'll notice I did not place an arrowhead at the network switch. Now that wasn't a mistake. The network switch is trying to be as transparent as possible, seamlessly linking your transmitter to your receiver. And again, you can think about your phone analogy. When you dialed the phone, you just dialed the number you wanted to contact and you were automatically connected. Behind the scenes, the phone company automatically connected you through switching stations. You didn't have to know any of that infrastructure, right? That was all automatically handled for you. On a local area network, that's exactly how it's going to work. Now this differs from how we reach devices outside your subnet. If we want to contact this server, we reach that by first contacting the router. So anything the operator hears in one handset, it will repeat into the other, and vice versa. Now this is a little bit different than the old phone analogy. Usually once the operator had the two lines, the operator would connect them and be off the call. But in this case, the router is an active participant in this connection. It continually translates between those two calls. Now, when we called the operator, we knew the operator's phone number. Zero, right? Zero was the operator's phone number. In your network settings, the gateway is the IP address of the router on your local area network. And of course, the router will also have a connection on the wide area network side. It's linking the two networks together, and each port has its own IP address. So if we want to make a connection on the local area network, we can make that connection ourselves. However, if we want to contact a device outside of our local area network, perhaps on the wide area network, we contact the gateway, the router, which will then open up a second connection to complete the next leg of our journey. So this brings up a question. How does our network device know if the destination is found on the local area network or if it should contact the gateway? Well, it figures that out by using its own IP address and subnet mask. And many of you will probably know this intuitively. Let's suppose my computer on my home network has an address of 192.168.10.11. I think that many of us would intuitively assume that the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 and devices on the local area network will have an address in the range of 192.168.10. something. Who knows where we learned this? We just know it is so, right? Well, let's go through and explain why this is true. When we describe IP addresses to each other, we usually describe it in dotted quad or dot decimal notation. Basically, this means your IP address will have four numeric fields separated by periods or dots. Notice your subnet mask is expressed the same way. And ultimately, we'll want a range of IP addresses that we can use on our local area network, and we will express that in the same way. So in the first field of our subnet mask, we find a 255. This tells our machine that any device on our local area network will match our IP address in this field. So we copy that down. We find values of 255 in the next two fields as well, so we copy them down also. Now in the last field, we find a zero. A zero means we can have any number we want in this field, and the device will still be considered to be on our local area network. So that's pretty simple, but let's clean up our language a little bit. A lot of people call this my group of local IP addresses. The proper term is a subnet. So if the device is in your subnet, then the network device will contact that IP address directly. If the device is not in your subnet, then we contact the router, and the router will establish another link for the next leg of the journey. This was a clip from the Dante Certification Program. To learn more, go to audinate.com slash certify.